Hi. Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome, and thanks a lot for joining me uh, for this presentation on Saturday uh, morning. And welcome to the shift room. And I'm wondering if anyone from you knows why data scientists uh, break up with shift and uh, uh, control keys. Does anyone know? Because they were too controlling and they didn't give him enough space. <laughs> so hi, everyone. Today I will demonstrate how Halion uses computer vision and cloud technology to manage its digital assets. First of all, let's talk about Halion. So we are a leading consumer health company, experts in oral health, pain relief, and digestion, formerly part of uh, GSK, GlaxoSmithKline. Um, we have been independent over a year already, and you might not recognize our name, uh, but it's highly likely that you've used our products. Uh, from bringing bright smiles to pain-free days, uh, Helen is dedicated to your well-being. Uh, you can see our brands on the slide. So our products portfolio includes brands such as Sensodyne, Otrovin, Poradontax, and many more. And as a market leader, uh, we possess an extensive collection of campaign materials which are dedicated to reaching consumers in need. And this vast repository uh, contains over a petabyte of digital assets. So what the digital asset is? You can see some examples on the slide, but roughly saying, uh, digital asset could be anything, any form of, of content or media that exists in digital form and has value. These assets can include files of in or information stored electronically, such as images, videos, audio files, documents, and many more. So you can see in Helion, it's usually promo videos, package shots, um, web banners, uh, but it also could be like a software file, so it could be a Pythonic file, some e-coms file like in PDF format or etc. And managing this vast and um, varied data set isn't easy. So we need to ensure uh, that our files are easy to find, to understand and to reuse, not to lose money and to remake every digital asset, every web, a web banner from time to time. So that's the place where metadata comes in. Uh, so what is metadata? You can see several examples of just random files from the laptops here. So think of metadata uh, as a personal dossier, uh, which, detail, uh, which gives you details about files origin, about content and many more. Uh, and my team created a smart cloud based solution to populate this metadata. Um, so this solution digs in, uh, digs out the keys information like brand, category, campaign details, and all the other details um, from, the, from the file. We also threw in some relevant keywords to each asset from the content uh, it contained to make everything um, super scalable, accessible, and user-friendly. Uh, so you can see an example of metadata of a, a common uh, Halion file. So you can see a file, and we, uh, uh, we can see that we have brand Sensodyne, sub-brand Pronamel, it's oral health category, it was written in Spanish, we managed to extract some keywords, some uh, text that was written inside the file. So it's PNG, so it's highly likely it was an image. And the age of the uh, assets is from five to seven years, which is a very uh, useful information for us, because when we search for 
a promo video. We want to um, get the, the most up-to-date video to stay, to stay tuned, to stay up-to-date, and not to use um, assets that are too old. So the next question is how to get information about the asset. And there are two sources of information. The first one is file pass. It's basically the name of the folders where the file is contained and the, the file name itself. And the second source is the content inside the file. So it's, if it's an image, it's just an image. Or if that's a video, it's what's inside the video, what text we can see on this video, and, uh, and so on. So imagine that we have this digital asset. It's um, a Sensodyne Pronamel pack shot. And what, uh, how can we populate metadata? Having this image and having this file pass, which you can see above. Um, so we can see here in the file pass oral health. So that's probably category. It's two-spaced, uh, the brand name, Norway. That's probably the market. So all this information is useful for us. Uh, yeah, and from, from image, um, we can extract some inf uh, information um, showing the digital asset to Azure Cognitive Services. And uh, Azure Cognitive Services uh, extract some tags, which is description of the image. It's like basically a neural network that gives you some key information about what is presented in the image. So for this specific pack shot, we got tags, design, screenshot, text, and Sensodyne. And when we have a tag, text, uh, then we use OCR, which stays for optical character recognition. So we extract all the tags, all the words that we can find in this image. And so you can see in this example that we managed to extract some text, rebuilds, restores, uh, daily protection, pronamel. And we combine these tags and text. And this is how we get our keywords. So optical character recognition could be very helpful uh, because w with uh, uh, a certain confidence level, we can extract some words, and based on these words, we can understand the language, uh, we can translate it, we can manage it, and yeah, that's really useful. So the next question is, um, how, do we, how do we understand uh, what brand is written in, in the stacks? Um, so for specifically for brand, we use uh, direct match, so we have a huge taxonomy file with all the brand names, all the categories, all the sub-brands, and etc. Uh, and we just search uh, brand by brand if we have the exact match or like a very close match with the brand name in the string that we extracted from, from the image. So here you can see that we have this back shot. We have GSK, Sensodyne, Repair and Protect, 75 milliliters. That's the words that we extracted from the image. And we just um, look at the matches of the brands with the string. So Sensodyne has a match because we have the word Sensodyne within the string. And when we want to um, find a sub-brand, we do some fuzzy magic techniques. So we basically look um, at the Levenstein distance between the sub-brand names that we have in taxonomy files and um, the strings that we have uh, from the image. So Levenstein distance, you can see a formula on, on the slide. It may seem very tricky. But uh, basically, um, l let me give you an example how you calculate it. For example, you, you want to calculate Levenstein distance between the word kitten and sitting. So you can change the word kitten to sitting in three iterations. So you firstly <coughs> substitute S for K, then I for E, then you insert G at the uh, in the end. Um, and that's how you get a new word. So that's Levenstein distance. Uh, so we have a threshold, and then we choose our sub-brand and populate it in, in metadata. 
Uh, there is one more problem with OCR. Uh, not one more problem, just, yeah, that's the first problem with OCR. Um, OCR takes images that are of supported file type and supported size. And uh, majority of digital assets are not in OCR compatible format. Um, these kind of files firstly go through preprocessing stage. If that's an image, um, like SVG image, and if we can simply transform it to PNG or JPEG, we just transform it to this format, then pass it to cognitive services and to OCR and do the same thing uh, um, as for uh, a normal image. But there are some file types um, that require a bit more complex transformation. One of such files uh, type, uh, one of such file type is Photoshop file. So um, Photoshop file uh, consists of layers and imagine that you have sheets of glass and you can draw something on the sheets of glass and then stack them together and you will get um, another image. And so our approach was to demerge all these layers, save each layer um, as an image in PNG or JPEG, and only then pass to uh, OCR. And the most challenging file um, format um, was, uh, was video. And um, it's really tricky because video files are the most expensive, so it can cost thousands of uh, uh, hundreds pounds to produce like a s small uh, promo video for our company. So it, it's really important not to lose this asset. Um, and our goal was to make sure that we can pass this information through uh, Azure Cognitive Services and um, OCR in particular. That is why we were just cutting videos into frames um, and then choosing a subset of these frames. So we were mainly choosing frames from the beginning of the videos and from the end of the videos and a bit less uh, from the middle section because uh, it's more likely that you will have some text, some logos or something relevant um, at the very end or uh, at the beginning. You may wonder why we didn't uh, use all the frames of the videos. So the answer is very straightforward. It's costly to use uh, all the frames uh, because to uh, analyze one image, it costs some, some amount of money, and what, uh, if it, that's a long video, it could contain uh, hundreds or thousands of uh, uh, frames, so that's why we need to subset. Um, and we can be um, even more smart, uh, we can combine uh, these frames just into one storyboard, um, just to put them all together and pass only one image for one, one vi uh, video file um, to the Azure Cognitive Services and to OCR. That's, that was our, our solution. And it's really important to mind that um, there is a limit on number of pixels that you can pass to Cognitive Services. Um, so it was another challenge to understand what's the best way to fit in as much as possible frames into one storyboard and make sure that uh, we have all the information that is useful for us. Uh, so let's su summarize our approach. So imagine we have a file is tagged and we want to make a tagged file from it. Uh, so first of all, for each um, uh, file, even if that's Pythonic file or if it's an audio file, we, pa uh, we do the file pass mining for it. Try to get as much info as possible from the name of the folders where the file is uh, placed. Then, depending on the format, we do some preprocessing. 
Uh, so we either just change the, um, the extension from SVG to PNG, or it's require more complex preprocessing, like uh, videos or like Photoshop's, and then we pass to cognitive analysis and OCR. If the file is uh, already in uh, OCR compatible format, we just pass it directly to cognitive services. So then we um, extract all the relevant information, use uh, fuzzy matching, uh, use some other techniques to get all the info, and then populate the metadata fields. That's how we get the tagged file. So you can explore um, a bit, you can deep dive into this um, topic a bit more if you follow us on uh, our uh, medium. So you have a QR code. We have uh, two articles written by my colleague um, about this, this specific topic. Uh, but we, you can also explore our AI business solution in depth. Uh, visiting our blog, discover wealth of technical and non-technical articles, and get to know our team members as well. Um, stay updated and engaged by following us. <laughs> I'm keep promoting the blog. Yeah, I can see several people who are scanning the co code. They're doing the right thing. Um, yeah, and thanks a lot for your att uh, attention. So if you have any questions, you can um, find me. I will be attending different uh, talks, and we can chat during lunch. Thanks a lot.